بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. We left off in our treaties our study of عقيدة واسطية by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى. We had come to the portion of the treaties where Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى began to mention the verses in the Quran which referred to the mercy, the rahmah, and the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being the off forgiving, the most merciful. And before we get into that, the last lesson we spoke and mentioned those characteristics of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses uh, love. And he is, he is the all-loving, the most compassionate, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most forgiving and the most compassionate, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the most just. And we mentioned those some of the verses pertaining to this that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in the Aqidat wa Satiyah. And one of the things I wanted to mention, which is a faida that Shaykh Salim ibn Fawzan mentions and, and many of the, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders in the last, one of the last verses there where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ahsanu. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ahsanu in Allah yuhibbul muhsaneen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that to, to be to perform your duty with righteousness or in its its best form verily Allah loves those right those the the righteous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the righteous Sheikh Salim bin Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan rahimahullah uh, hafizahullah ta'ala he mentions about ahsanu when Allah ordered this is fi'l amr this is when Allah subhanahu this is in the imperative form as we say in English where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us he subhanahu, he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ahsanu in Allaha yuhibbul muhsaneen. So he commands with doing things in their in the best way possible, with righteousness and justice. And then he says, In Allaha, verily Allah yuhibbul muhsaneen. Verily Allah loves those those who are righteous, those who uh, do things with righteousness and goodness. Sheikh Salim bin Fazan mentions about the word wa uh, ahsanu that where Allah commands uh, with righteous he said hadha amr min Allah ta'ala bi ihsan wa huwa ityan bil amali ala ahsan ahwalihi wa akmalihi wa akmal wa akmalaha wa ihsan huwa a'la maqam maqamat at ta'a so this is beautiful Sheikh Salim bin Fazan he said he mentioned as we as we mentioned before that this is a commandment from Allah. This is a command from Allah the Almighty to have ihsan. And in the authentic hadith, in the hadith of Jibreel, where he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about those maratib uh, uh, of, of uh, Islam. He, he mentioned ihsan. He said, ya, he said, akhbirni an al-ihsan. So Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam he asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to tell him about Ihsan. What is Ihsan? The Prophet sallallahu answered by saying, "Huwa in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara fa in lam tukun tarahu fa innahu yarak." The Prophet sallallahu responded by saying that it is to worship Allah in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara as if you as if you were to see him. فَإِنْ لَمْ تُكُنْ تُرَاهُ And the fact that, that you cannot see him فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ Know that he sees you. Verily he sees you. إِنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ كَأَنَّكَ تُرَاهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ تُكُنْ تُرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ So that is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in with the full fear and acknowledgement that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you that what you're doing is being watched over by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although you cannot see him, you're knowing full well 
then he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. That is the, as Sheikh Salim al Fawzan, he said, have a akmal. He said, itiyan bil amali ala ahsin ahwalihi wa akmalihi wa akmaliha. Wa ihsan huwa a'la maqamat al ta'a. So he said, it is doing a deed uh, in, its, in the best way possible. And it's and being as perfect as you can, be, you know, doing it in the in the best way that you're able to do. And if we were to reflect on that in our own lives, for example, when you're at night, when it when it what's come to uh, it, it's the evening, and you're locked away in your room. And you do whatever you do, whether it be surfing the internet, whether it be whatever. If you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you, and that He is Sami al Basir, that He is the all hearing and the all seeing, that when you're on the telephone with your friend and you're spreading some tales about someone, or you're lying, or you're uh, deceiving people or spreading deception amongst the community or that you're watching things that are impermissible to watch the person who has reached the level in their Iman or in their Islam of Ihsan then they are doing their deeds knowing that Allah sees them so instead they will be busy with Ta'a they will know that Allah sees them that will, re that will help them to refrain from doing those sins of watching the haram or engaging in foul and vain speech and evil speech, backbiting and slandering people. So that is ihsan. Or that, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, you know, it, it, it is worshipping Allah. So the, it is worshipping Allah. As if, you're, uh, as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, the person who's reached ihsan with regards to doing ta'at, that this person is, is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They maybe they're making salat. And they're making their prayer as if they are in front of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if they see Allah. And without doubt, Allah sees them. So if we realize that, and we actualize that ihsan, then our prayer, we will be in, 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 with full love and full fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment and fear that possibly our prayer would not be accepted. We'll have khawf wa raja, the hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. That's what Ihsan leads you to. And I drew this chart as some of the scholars, they, they illustrate this the same illustration to let us know and let us ponder that Ihsan is or Ihsan it is the highest level of Islam as we see in the, the illustration there Ihsan right here is Ihsan Ihsan or Ahsan. Ihsan. This is the highest level of, of Islam. Then, and, and this is the level for the Muhsinun. The Muhsinun. Those people who are the righteous doer. Those people who, who do righteous, righteousness uh, in the best way. Muhsinun. Those people, they are the righteous ones. Righteous. And they, they are uh, like the Salihin. You know, those people who are, who are righteous and pious. You know, with, with the, the highest level of Iman that we can achieve. That's because they have Ihsan. That's the level of Islam that they're on. They're Ihsan. And, they're, and then the second level is Iman. Iman. 
And Iman, as we mentioned, it refers, as is in the same hadith, the hadith of Jibreel, where the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Iman, and he said that it is those six pillars of Iman, in tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyum al-akhir, wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, Iman is the six articles or pillars of Iman, and it's to believe in Allah, believe in His uh, messengers, to believe in His... Uh, I believe in the angels, believe in uh, the divinely revealed books, to believe in the prophets or messengers, and to believe in the uh, the day of judgment, and to believe in the qadr, the divine destiny, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned the maratib uh, of the qadr and so forth in our earlier lessons. And so... This entails Iman. You know, all of us have some Iman. You know, the Muslims in general, and the Mu'min. So that's why the ulama, they say the Mu'min, a Mu'min, you know, is, is a high level. You know, this person, a Mu'min. But higher than that is Al-Muhsin. The Muhsin, he, the Mu'min, has some, you know, falls into... Uh, they do the wajib, they do the obligatory deeds, the mu'min does, the one with iman. But sometimes they fall into some muharramat, some of the uh, things which are impermissible. This is the state of the mu'min. The muhsin is a person whose iman is camel, that they do the extra acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the highest, they're at the highest level of iman. Then, we have the people who are just in the fold of Islam, walhamdulillah, ni'ma azim, that they are Muslim. This is where the Muslim is. The Muslim in general, and of course all of them are Muslim, but this is just the level where, where they are. The, the person who practices Islam, sometimes they may not do the wajibat, sometimes they, you know, they, they have a lot of shortcomings, they do a lot of sins. But, you know, alhamdulillah, they're Muslim. That's a ni'mah. But the person on the next level is the level of Iman, of the level of, uh, of the Mu'min. So that's a higher level of Islam. And then the third level is Ihsan, the Muhsinun. In Allah Yuhibbul Muhsinin. You know, Allah loves those who are righteous. That, they're on the higher level. And that's the level we want to be. So I just wanted to mention that before we get into this next section of the, the book. Qala Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned the attributes related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the, the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which mention the mercy of Allah and His uh, being the off-forgiving and the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala and that these are divine attributes. So these verses affirm for us and verify for us that Allah has this characteristic. No matter what Ahl Ilhad says about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact is, if we look to the Quran and we look to the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and we look to the understanding of the Salaf al-Sali, we look to those Athar, you know, starting with the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, with Tabi'a Tabi'een, and those who follow them until the Day of Judgment, we'll find that they make ithbat, they affirm those divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the attributes we're referring to now are the attributes of rahmah and maghfirah. Rahmah meaning uh, the mercy, and maghfirah, the power, the, 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 the forgiveness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, forgives His creation, His creatures. وَقَوْلُهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَقَوْلُهُ رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا وَقَوْلُهُ وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا وَقَوْلُهُ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعْتَ وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَقَوْلُهُ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ رَحْمَةً وَقَوْلُهُ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَقَوْلُهُ فَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ خَيْرٌ حَافِذًا حَافِذًا وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ 
So in those verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the first verse, He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, in Surah Al-Fatiha, as we read it throughout, uh, we read it throughout our daily prayers. And the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Our Lord, you comprehend all things in mercy and knowledge. So that also affirms for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his ilm, that his ilm encompasses everything. And Allah said, and he is the most merciful to the believers. And Allah Tabarakwa Ta'ala mentions, and my mercy embraces all things. And Allah says, your Lord has written mercy for himself. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he is the off forgiving, the most merciful. And Allah says, but Allah is the best to guard and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. And all of those verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself mercy, the rahmah, and maghfirah, that he forgives. He forgives his, his creation and his creatures for the many sins that we do. And we're in constant need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and his forgiveness and his his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa ghafur rahim He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. And the scholars, they distinguish the difference between, for example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, uh, Ar-Rahman, ar rahman wa Ar-Rahim. So, for example, for example, they explain Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahman. Uh, Rahman. Or, or mercy. We'll just say mercy. Mercy, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then Ar Rahim. Oops. Ar Rahim. Also referring to beneficent, beneficent, uh, or, or mercy, as they say. They both denote mercy, but here's the we're going to talk about the what distinguishing, distinguishes the, the two. So Ar Rahim is even an increased amount of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it denotes, it is khas, or we'll just say, it's khas lil mu'mineen. It is restricted restricted to the believers. Restricted for believers. Okay? That is Ar Rahim. And Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman. This is for all of Allah's creation. All. I'll just say all creation. Okay? So, Ar Rahman, Yashmel Jamil Khalk. Ar Rahman, it includes all of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rahman. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman. Bismillah ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim. So, uh, ar-Rahman who possesses ar-Rahma, mercy. And his mercy includes all of his creation. The fact that he gives all of his creatures uh, life. And he gives all of his creatures perhaps the ability to love. Or especially the humankind and the jinn, that they possess those attributes of loving and, and so forth, that they have the f fact and the mercy between them. And even the animals, in fact, they, have, they possess a type of mercy. The, the female cat, the way she protects her kittens, or the, uh, the female hippopotamus protects her young. She will kill you 
if you try to even come near her young, or she feels threatened, as many animals, the bear, what have you. And this is the mercy. Allah has, a, he is a, a Rahman, possesses a Rahma. He possesses mercy, and his mercy is for all of his creation. And his mercy is unlike the mercy that we described of those, crea those uh, creatures. Those creatures, their mercy cannot be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason is, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as we mentioned on countless occasions, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمِيُّ بَصِيرٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيُّ بَصِيرٌ That there is nothing comparable to him, and he is the all-hearing, all-seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman who possesses a Rahmah. He possesses mercy. He is the most merciful who possesses mercy, uh, mercy. And his mercy, what does it mean? It means that he has mercy for all of his create his creatures. All of his creation. The believers and the disbelievers. Those who are atheists and those who are monotheist. Those who are polytheist, those who don't believe in anything, all of them receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. But Ar-Rahim, this mercy, is restricted for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That is for the believers only, Ahlul Tawheed, those people who believe in Islamic monotheism. And that includes those people who came before our nation, before the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those people who were the followers of the prophets before, their nations, those people who followed them truly and didn't commit shirk, and didn't, uh, you know, disobey their, their messengers or kill them, as some of the, the nations before went astray and did to their NBA, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, that this is for the believers. It's restricted. Ar Rahim is is a, is a Rahma, an increased amount of Rahma that is restricted to the believers, restricted for the believers. So this gives us a little bit of insight into those divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the all forgiving, the most merciful. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those people who receive His constant mercy and His constant grace and favor. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.